So just as a recap of what we've seen so far, again, we start the sequence of excitation and contraction in the heart using these autorhythmic cells that fire these action potentials automatically. That spreads to neighboring contractile cells to generate their action potential, and then that action potential triggers contraction. But once this cell has its action potential, it will also spread to neighboring contractile cells to cause them to contract too. So let's look at what that should look like in the heart. We generate that action potential in the autorhythmic cells of the SA node. It spreads by gap junctions throughout this autorhythmic conduction system network. But as it's doing that, it kind of spreads off this network, shown here by the red arrows, into other contractile cells. So remember, all these yellow ones are autorhythmic cells. Their job is not to contract. They actually can't contract. But as those action potentials are spreading, it's going to spread off of this network to excite all the actual contractile muscle cells. So it's like you kind of light this firecracker, and as that fuse spreads down, it causes all of these cells in the muscle of the atria or the ventricles to begin to actually start contracting. And so here's what I mean by a firecracker. This analogy actually really helps me think about how the heart contracts. So this little fuse here, you'll notice that its job is not to explode. It doesn't actually cause the bang. And that's why I think these are kind of like the autorhythmic cells. Their job is just to light the fuse and to start the process. Just like autorhythmic cells, they just generate the action potential even though they're not trying to contract. But as that fuse travels down, you'll notice that it's spreading to the firecrackers on either side of that fuse. Those are like our contractile cells. They're ones that are actually gonna cause the explosion. Just like contractile cells, actually generate force. And this is basically what the heart is like. We have this conduction system, this fuse, but then off of this fuse, we have these cells, these contractile cells that actually generate force. So again, this is like our fuse, the thing that we light, but as that fuse spreads, it's gonna excite contractile cells along the way. So your heart is kind of like a firecracker. <laughs> you can add that to the list of stupid analogies that help me think about physiology. But the reason I also kind of like this analogy is because it helps us think about how exactly the heart coordinates the sequence of contraction. And basically what we're going to talk about now is that the heart always depolarizes from the atria first and then goes down towards the ventricles. It always goes from the top to the bottom. And that's because it's kind of like this firecracker. If you light the firecracker here, it's always gonna start here and go this way. If I light the firecracker here, it's never gonna start exploding down here first. And that's basically like your heart. You have the SA node, and that's where we light the firecracker. That's where we start the action potentials. So we're going to always cause the heart to explode or to contract up here in the atria first. And that's going to spread down into the ventricles second. So let's just add some more detail and some names and some structures instead of saying firecrackers. But the idea, you'll notice when the heart is completely at rest, so we haven't lit the SA node yet, the firecracker is not lit. Whenever the SA node does fire, when it starts generating its autorhythmic action potentials, we know that that means that the SA node is going to depolarize. It's going to have its action potentials. But what we know also is that from the SA node, that signal is going to spread very quickly through this conduction network. So the fuse is going to be lit and it's going to be spreading through. One new thing that I wanted to introduce is you'll notice that it says here that the conduction slows when you get to the AV node. So as the signal spreads and collects in the AV node, 
you'll notice that it pauses there for a split second. In class, we'll talk more about why that is so important, but I'll introduce that concept here real quick. So we lit the fuse right here. It spreads through the atria, and you'll notice that now the atria are depolarized, shown there by that purple color. But what we want to do is to allow the atria to finish contracting, to pump all of their blood into the ventricles before the ventricles start contracting. So the ventricles are going to say, I don't want to start contracting until the atria are done. I know I need to wait my turn. Because we saw that the atria kind of helped the ventricles fill up with blood. So it'd be great if the ventricles waited until the atria were completely done. And it turns out that's the job of this AV node delay or this slowing of electrical conduction. As the electrical signal gets to the AV node, there's a slight slowdown of that spreading of the fuse, of those action potentials. And that pause right there means that the ventricles are going to have to wait a split second, which allows the atria time to finish contracting, to finish pushing all that blood into the ventricles before the signal starts spreading down into the ventricles. So you'll notice in step four down here, let that menu bar go away. In step four, once the AV node delay is over, once the atria have finished contracting, now that wave of depolarization is gonna spread down through the ventricles, down through the bundle branches, and ultimately through the Purkinje fibers in step five. So again, to me, this looks a lot just like lighting a firecracker at the very top, and then it just spreads down through that network. And this is why the atria always contract first, because we light the fuse up here first and it spreads down always, or it should always. Atria first, ventricle second. Atria get excited first, atria contract first. Ventricles get excited second, ventricles contract second. And it turns out that this order, atria first, ventricle second, is not only important, but it can be deadly if it doesn't happen in the right order. We'll actually see some cases of that on Wednesday. But to make sure that your heart is following this sequence, to make sure that your heart is being excited in the right order and it's contracting in the right order, we can measure the electrical activity of your heart using the electrocardiogram. This is very similar to the EMG that we saw in lab last week, but instead of measuring the electrical activity of your skeletal muscle, we're gonna measure the electrical activity of your cardiac muscle. Same thing, just different muscle. So how can we measure what is going on on the inside of the cells of your heart? All we're gonna do uh, in lab on Monday, actually, so this is also partly a lab intro, is hook you up with a couple of electrodes, just like we did with the EMG lab. You guys remember we applied those sticky electrodes to the surface of your skin? In ECG readings, this pair of electrodes, so we'll attach one, we're gonna attach one to the right wrist and also to your left ankle. This pair of electrodes is known as a lead, and it's basically going to allow us to measure the electrical activity in your heart. Because as you see in lab, these electrodes, essentially what they're gonna do is to be able to detect all of this charge flowing through your body as a result of all this depolarization occurring in your heart. So as your heart has all these action potentials and it's getting positive and it's getting negative, and as all these charges flowing inside and outside your heart, that charge actually can be detected using these surface electrodes. I go into more detail of exactly how these electrodes detect that in the lab on Monday, 
which you can do before lab if you'd like. But that's the general idea for now. And so let's look at what this ECG tracing should look like. A normal ECG will have, will look basically like this panel down here. And I'll allow this menu bar to go away. It kind of has that first little bump at the beginning, this huge spike in the middle, and then a bump at the end. And I really like this GIF, this video in this slide, because it shows you exactly what's happening in the heart during every bump of the ECG. So you'll notice the first bump, so it's about to reset here, correlates with the atria depolarizing in the image up here. There's this flat line when the signal pauses at the AV node. When the ventricles depolarize, you get that huge spike, and then the ventricles reset, and you get that final bump. So again, the general basic features of a normal ECG are this first bump associated with the atria depolarizing, this flat line associated with the AV node delay, this huge spike associated with ventricle depolarization, and this final bump associated with ventricles repolarizing or resetting. So again, atria depolarize, AV node delay, flat line, because no electrical activity, ventricles depolarize, huge spike, ventricles repolarize, final wave. By the way, you'll notice that the ventricle depolariz depolarization, the huge spike, is way, way bigger, way, way stronger than the atria depolarizing. You see that huge spike? It's huge. And that's because the ventricles have way more muscle cells. Uh, they're way bigger, they're way stronger. So when they get excited, many more cells get excited. And that's why you see that the electrical signal is much bigger. So this ECG and the different, what are known as waves, are really important and you'll see on exam two a lot being able to identify what is happening in the heart during each of these waves so i'll do it one more time just to make sure atria depolarize av node delay flatline ventricles depolarize and then ventricles reset and repolarize back to their resting membrane potential So this picture is just gonna add a little bit more detail to that ECG that we just saw a second ago. So just as we've seen before, we light the fuse at the SA node, and that is gonna spread through the atria. But we saw that that gives us the first bump in our ECG. And this bump or this wave in the ECG is known as the P wave. So this first bump that we generated in this figure, when the atria depolarized, is known as the P wave. But once we generate the P wave, what happens immediately after is the atria contract. But you'll notice when the atria are contracting, there's no reading on the ECG. And that's because when the, vent when the atria are contracting, they're not generating action potentials. They just had their action potentials. All they're doing now is contracting. Because we know that the sequence of events for getting a muscle to contract is you excite it first, and then it contracts after. And that's shown here in the ECG. The atria get excited first with the P wave, and then in the flat line right after, the atria contract. We also know that this flat line right here is the AV node delay. We're going to pause the electrical signal for a second to allow the atria time to finish contracting. So pausing the signal right there. Once the atria are done contracting, the depolarization is going to spread down through the ventricles, starting what's known as the QRS complex. This first little dip associated with the signal spreading down through here, through the bundle branches, is known as the Q wave. As the signal continues to spread down through the ventricles, through the Purkinje fibers, we get the huge R wave. 
And then finally, as it finishes up down here, which I'll move out to get the menu out of the way, the final step of ventricle depolarization gives us the S wave. And combined, the Q wave, the R wave, and the S wave are ventricular depolarization. And them together, they're usually known as the QRS complex. So anytime you hear QRS, think ventricle depolarization, huge spike. But after the ventricles get depolarized, we have this lack of electrical activity as the ventricles finish contracting. Finally, after the ventricles have depolarized, after they've contracted, then they begin to repolarize, shown here in this red color. And we saw that as the ventricles begin to reset and repolarize, that's what generates this final bump, and we're just gonna call this final wave the T wave. So this is the basics of a normal ECG the way your electrical activity in your heart should normally be ordered. Atria first, P wave first. A pause at the AV node, so we get this flat line, also known as the PR segment. Ventricles next, so we get the huge QRS. A pause while the ventricles contract. And then finally, the ventricles repolarize and gives us the T wave. And then we just do it automatically all over again because the SA node is composed of autorhythmic cells and they're just gonna fire an action potential all over again. So it's kind of crazy to think about that every single time your heart beats, which happens, what, like 60 times per minute, uh, 360 times per hour, uh, I don't know how many times per day, but that's a crazy number of heartbeats every single day, every single year. It's going through this process every single time that it beats. SA node, atria, AV node delay, ventricles, reset, do it all again. But it's kind of cool that we can measure that process non-invasively using ECG electrodes. It's like, this looks like a really nice, normal ECG. Atriar depolarizing, nice P wave. There's an AV node delay. There's a PR segment. The atria have time to finish contracting. That's great. The ventricles depolarize really nicely, really cleanly, really quickly. Looks great. They finish contracting in this ST segment, and then they repolarize and reset following the T wave. Now we do it again. On Wednesday, we're gonna try to diagnose some abnormal ECGs and some potentially life-threatening ECGs. And it'll prove to you that this simple diagnostic tool can help us diagnose some really big problems with how your heart gets excited.